Now then, here we are at the summit of Mardale Ill Bell, which is 760 meters above sea level. And the view here is just amazing. You can literally just see for miles all the way around, down to the coastline there. And then if I bring you around this side, we're looking back down to Hall's Water down here. But yeah, just incredible. So today we are heading to the top of High Street. That's 828 meters above sea level. It's a bit of a boring one because the underfoot is just like flat and nothing exciting. But from there, you can see a hell of a lot. Again, you're high up and obviously get to see these views. It's got quite a lot of history though, that mountain, because they used to race horses up there back in the day. All the sort of local farmers and everything would bring the best horse up to race and put bets on and things like that. Anyway, we are gonna hopefully, once we get to the sort of summit of, um, I've forgotten it already, High Street, we're gonna drop down and then come all the way back down to Bleetan. And then from Bleetan, I'm just gonna chill out have a swim, mess about there for a bit, and then hopefully find a place to pitch, either by the town or hike back up again, just to uh, find somewhere with a bit of late evening sunshine. Anyway, let's be getting on with it. I am just on the laborious walk to the top of High Street and all it is, it's like a grass plane and a grass plane. <laughs> nothing technical, nothing exciting, not really much to see as you are walking forward. Ah, but it's one of those, you get to the top and it does lead off to some pretty cool places. One of which I'll be showing you today, which is the drop down to Blee Water. And I definitely have to get in that for a swim because it is just so hot today. Tiny bit of cloud coverage for a second, but there are not many clouds. And if we look over there, you can see the sort of uh, streams off the aeroplanes, which just sat, they're not really moving. So there isn't much airflow, so it is sticky. But if you look behind us, at least you can see a couple of nice mountains. That's um, Ill Bell, we've come from Mardale Ill Bell, that's Ill Bell, and I think Frost Wick or something along those lines, that one. I've not been up on those, so that'd be a, another adventure to do another time. Anyway, we're getting close to the top, and then from there we can dive off and hopefully show you something a little bit more exciting. Here we are then at the trig point, the summit of High Street, 828 meters. And if you look around, it's all very flat and boring for the first sort of few hundred yards of this. And this is why High Street to me is pretty boring. But if I flip you around in the distance, what can we see? Cause it's such a clear day. We've got Blencather over there. I think that must be Skidor in the background. We've got Striding Edge, you can see that, which leads on to Helvellyn. And then that's, uh, what's that one in the middle? Catsty Cam, is it? Yes, beautiful place. And I think if you continue around here, this far end one here might be the Old Man of Coniston. What a place though. Yeah, and such a still day. It's like ridiculous. There's just no air movement whatsoever, so. The heat is just hugging you and it, it's getting to be annoying. So let's head off down this hill somewhere and get into Blee Town for a nice swim. See if I can get that dog chucked in too. <laughs> so navigating on a place like this where you can't really see, you just don't know where you're gonna drop off. You could be heading towards a cliff, but Often there is like a cairn which just gives you a bit of direction just to show that that's where the turning is. So I'm guessing we're going down here. We'll soon find out. 
at least it's uh, clear today so we're not going to sort of head towards a cliff and just be like lemmings and jump off it <laughs> This is blee water, and on a day like today when it's hot and sticky, it is just enticing. I cannot wait to get down there and get in there. But it just sits in this sort of bow section with all these craggy outcrops just sort of uh, overlooking it, and it is just beautiful. Such a nice place to come. So I'm going to sort of head down to this little town, if you can see down here, and then once I get there, you sort of drop back down and then get to the water's edge, and we'll get in for a nice swim. I also need to filter some water because I am pretty much out. The dog's sort of been drinking out of the old town and what have you, but I need to get some for myself and make sure that I'm hydrated on a day like today because dehydration can really stop you in your tracks and turn this from a lovely safe day into something that can actually be quite dangerous. So, yep, let's get on. Ah, feel the burn, Whew. feel the burn. Blue, come on, get your bag on. Come on then. Yeah. Well, we have made it down to Blee Water. Look at this. The green water, it's like an oasis just beautiful anyway i am too hot the dog's too hot so definitely time to get in for a proper dip oh what a place though just <laughs> yeah i'm probably boring you with it all but it is just exciting it really is Right, first job, let's get some uh, water filtered.
Right, it's time to get in for this long awaited dip. Just gotta be a bit careful getting in. Oh, yes. Right. Let's do it. divine what a feeling oh. oh that was lovely just recharging the batteries although wasting his batteries as he's chasing the drone around just restarts the brain and body it really does I love just getting in some cold water and just having a bit of a float about for a while it is just like therapy it really is ah <sighs> yeah what a day for it as well this beautiful sunshine anyway it's time to move on and try find somewhere to pitch a tent we've got all the water we need for the night that's the main thing and i've had my bath so bedtime now is it and it is sunday so <laughs> that is what happens on a sunday Well, I'm just by this tarn here, which sits on top of this sort of spine that runs down the centre of these two valleys. And I think this is called Riggingdale Crag on this side. But I remember camping up on the top of Kidsty Pike about a year and a few months ago and looking back down onto this tarn thinking that looks like a nice place to camp because I could just see the light bouncing off it. And also, because I camped recently just up there, I remember looking down and thinking it's still in the sunshine as well uh, late on in the day which is great so it's going to get a nice sunset which hopefully will just sort of uh, pour over the top of this and just uh, keep me happy late into the evening so let's have a look around for a place to camp i mean just around here there's plenty of spaces but i'm going to head up onto the top here where it's like 600 odd meters above sea level and uh, we'll see if we can find somewhere to pitch a tent let's go just ditched the backpack back there somewhere and I've come for a little bit of a jog out just to scout to see if I can find the perfect pitch for the evening it's all about searching for that perfect pitch isn't it anyway this is the top of I think it might be called rough crag uh, 628 meters 
But to say it's not that high, look at where you're sat. I mean, the view all the way around is just unbelievable. So a full sort of 360 degree view. It is just incredible. So definitely worth coming up here to try and find a place to pitch a tent. I mean, honestly, you're right in the center of it all here. It's just mind blowing. <laughs> it really is. I need to find a pitch which is gonna get the sort of last bit of light. The sun is gonna set over there, so it's gonna strike all this sort of high section. So I need to be sort of aiming somewhere in this. The problem is the wind's coming over the top here and I need to have some wind as well because the midges will be her absolutely horrendous on that leeward side. So I just need to find the, the perfect place for it really. Well, we're just sort of crouched behind the only rock up here that is big enough for us to sort of uh, find a little bit of shade. It has just been hard work, it really has. And uh, after I've sort of finished playing in the town, which was just lovely, I've just been dreaming about going back and going and getting in it. And to be fair, it's only there. It's not far at all, really. But by the time you got down there, swum again, cool yourself off, and then um, come back, you're just in the same scenario. Sweaty and hot. So yeah, I was thinking maybe I might just take this down to that other little town and soak it, and then uh, just put it back on and just cool myself off that way. Ah, <sighs> part of the uh, way of being when you're out in the sunshine. Not much you can do about it, apart from hide where you can and cool yourself down where you can.
by heck, it's a lovely night. I uh, spent a couple of hours wishing for a breeze to come and just keep sort of flowing over us all night because uh, the midges started biting and I thought I cannot cope with this, they just honestly do my head in. So yeah, this breeze has just sort of cooled me down, made me feel a lot nicer. I've had to actually put a jacket on as well, just to keep me warm enough. But yeah, sunshine's still up. We've got to probably, let's work that out. God, I can't even look into that. We've probably got an hour of sunshine actually. But if we look around here, we've got the uh, town down in the bottom, the uh, Blee Water, and that's completely dark. And then just over the valley there, we've got small water and again, completely in the shade. So it's pretty good being high up on a hill like this because you just get that extra bit of sunshine at the end of the day. Although I was cursing it earlier, <laughs> I really did not like having the sun. There's just too much of it. Anyway, let's get back here and we need to make some food because I'm actually starving now. So back to the little tent. I've even got a beer, I might even have that. I've carried it all this way, so I'll have to have a taste maybe. For dinner then we have tomato pasta salad. And I'm gonna add with that chicken meatballs and pasta, which is also in a tomato based sauce. So two ration packs should do the trick. So let's get all this cooking gear out and get me fed because I'm am, I am actually really hungry now. So in my cup we have a lighter, my little uh, doodly things, and my stove, and the gas. So, let's get this stove lit, everything in the pan, warm it up, give it a stir, Get it in my belly. <laughs> oh, midges are actually just starting. I think that wind might have just dropped a little. Nightmare. Complete nightmare. Anyway, <laughs> we'll get this done first, eh? Worry about the midges in a minute. Oh. So we've got it all in the pan. So we're gonna get it on and get it cooking. Speaking of cooking, I am literally cooking in here. This sun on this side of this tent has just turned it into a massive radiator. So let's get this on and then I'm getting out of this tent. Midges too, starting to play havoc. There we go, right, get me out of here. Right, I've got this cooked, some water with me, beer in my pocket, and I'm gonna go find some grass that's moving the most to find where the breeze is, just to keep these midges at bay. <sighs> Yeah, it looks like it's actually calmed right down. Not much movement at all. Anyway, let's find a seat and get this eaten. Look at this big chunk of a rock here. That looks cool, doesn't it? Let's get on this. Oh. Yep, awesome. Look at that, made for it. <laughs> ah, but I'm hungry. Mm. Well, I'm red hot after that dinner. I've had to take my jacket off and that sun is still just pounding down on me. It has been relentless today. Just the odd cloud which is just sort of giving that little bit of shade. Anyway, it is time for pudding. And this was provided, it's the second tin provided by Gary, who is a member of my Patreon. 
Everybody loves a Gary, eh? Anyway, it is uh, Brew York Sweet Temptation and it's a chocolate caramel stout. Sounds heavy straight away, 6.6%. Let's have a taste. I think he said it was his favorite, so we'll see what his taste buds are like. But it's sweet, very sweet. Bloody hell, I need a spoon with that. It's not bad, actually. I think it's one of those that will uh, take a bit of getting used to. I sort of feel it needs a big dollop of ice cream. Just some plain vanilla ice cream. <laughs> Just in the centre of it. Ugh. It's drinkable. You could never put this down as my favourite though, no chance at all. In fact, Gary, I think you might even have COVID. You've got no taste buds, mate. Anyway, I'll sit back oh, and just chill out for a while, eh? Cheers, all. I'm stood at the highest point, 628 metres, and the sun has just set over the back there. And as soon as the sun set, it, the temperature just plummeted straight away. So yeah, on with this jacket again. And this jacket is uh, a Mammut one, and it's called the Eiger Jock, I think, uh, light. And it's a synthetic jacket, and I've only got down ones really, so to have a synthetic jacket, for me, it's actually pretty good, because. Obviously, in some of the wet weather, this doesn't lose its sort of uh, insulative value, whereas a down jacket just sort of compresses. I mean, generally, I prefer down, but I am actually really liking this. This is a um, Primaloft Gold um, insulation in it, and it's just super lightweight, packed small, and perfect for you know any summer stuff and even into three season, definitely. Yeah, I mean, I definitely need it tonight. But luckily, there's a bit more of a breeze come through again and it's just pushed those midges away. Because honestly, midges just ruin a night out. They really do. And give me winter camping in a snowstorm any day of a summer camping when the midges are out. Yes, I definitely prefer those colder temperatures that keep those bugs at bay. Anyway, it has been a pleasure today, absolute pleasure. It's so nice to get out and, you know, just enjoy the mountains, but also dive into a town and just enjoy the cold water. Yeah, so I'm gonna get myself back down here to the tent, which is only just down here and the dog's just chilling out and asleep that's gonna be it honestly i'm absolutely knackered the sun has drained me today so yeah straight to bed i reckon anyway we'll see the morning
morning flowers this is one of my favorite times just getting out of your tent seeing that it's all clear and then just taking in that first view hey blue come on get down get down <laughs> oh yeah and there's a lovely fresh breeze just passing over me and it's just so nice after having such a hot day yesterday. <laughs> Dog's happy. <laughs> oh dear. What a mutt. So yeah, I'm just going to chill out a while, I think. Just take it all in and just enjoy it all. Yep, in my king's throne here. Enjoying life to its fullest, eh? Yep. Look at that view, eh? just quickly show you inside my tent this is the Starlight One by Terra Nova and I've got to say I'm really really enjoying this tent it's so nice to pitch and it just looks well every single time that you put it up even on slightly uneven ground which a lot of tents just misshape and look a bit awkward but uh, yeah very happy with it so in the porch it's only a small porch but it's enough to actually fit the dog in this is the dog's mat and he's laying on some nice comfy grass there just at this side i've just got some of the cooking gubbins so just my pots and pans and water and food and things like that and then if we go into the main room we have sort of a coffin style i'd say sleeping area but it actually doesn't feel too bad to say this tent is designed to be a small tent so in here you can see i've got this mammut sleeping bag which is a central zip so i've just uh, zipped it all the way undone because it's uh, been a hot night and i've just slept on top of it like that i've got my seat to summit pillow in there and then the thermarest x-therm which is overkill for summer camping but it fits in there pretty well i've actually got the bag right at the far end now this full length here fits me in well at six foot tall but having the bag it just shortens it a little bit too much but it doesn't bother me because i'm a side sleeper so my knees are sort of bent into one side either way and then it brings it off the bag anyway but there's still enough space at the sides here just to put a little bit you know i've got all my sort of camera gear that's the drone this is the head of my backpack which has got all my sort of tools and toiletries and things in and then at this side you can see again there's a bit more space down there and i've just got my clothes a couple of pockets each of either side this one has got the um, bags for all the sort of kit that needs to be packed away and in this pocket i just put like my torch camera and a phone things like that also this mat is actually a wide mat it's a larger thing so i think it's long and wider so 25 inches wide so it still just has that space either side just to fit something but if you had a smaller mat obviously you'd have a bit more space you could shove everything to one side like that and just move it over and then obviously you've got quite a large space at that side and look at these these are some uh, blackouts so you can sleep better and they're, they're actually shaped so they don't sort of like stick to your eyelids or anything like that anyway i've tried those for the last sort of couple of times and they work pretty well and they come with the sleeping bag 
so it's just part of it so they're just sort of trying to think of your full sleeping system there and the moot to make sure that you sleep well but there we go that is the setup in the tent i really like it though it's such a nice tent and i can't wait to try the bigger version of this which is the two-man version and i think that for one person will be actually ideal purely because there's going to be more space to sort of uh, play in so come sort of winter months i might have to get one and try one of those out yep terra nova starlight one right let's get a bit of breakfast and a cup of coffee i don't really drink coffee but i just sort of fancied one this morning so let's boil some water first job some of my filtered water from yesterday I love these bottles just work really really well and obviously they start compressing in size as you're using the water right let's get this on oh one thing I would say about this tent though you can obviously cook in here with this shut because I think there'll be too much heat, it'll be too close to this and obviously by the time you've got a pan on here and this is coming down here it's going to be definitely too close. So you do have to sort of have it open but it's a great little wind block so that's why I'm sat in here now. <sighs> right, get this gas flowing. On with the water. Lid on so it boils a bit quicker. There we go. I can feel it's just about to boil. Let's get that off. Right, first job. Make it safe. Let's drop it into here. Let's make a coffee, eh? Instant coffee. I don't even think I've had instant coffee in the last 10 years. I only have one about every one a month, maybe. And uh, with that, I'll just make a proper one. Ah, oh, it doesn't look too bad. It smells good anyway. Drop some milk in as well. I'll just cool that water down a bit. Ah, there we go then. So, a cup of coffee, a couple of simple biscuits for breakfast. And now, although the view out of here is pretty special, I'm gonna have to go find a better one, I think. While you're out here, you might as well, really. Let me just show you this view. Get a beautiful dog in it too. Yeah. Yeah, and if you're interested in this tent, there is a link in the description and there is a 20% discount code to this tent and any other tent on the website. In fact, any other product on their website. Um, so just check that out. You just need to uh, use my code, which is BLUE20 at the checkout so yeah not bad at all look at this the perfect seat even got its own table <sighs> right let's have a sit down <sighs> hey up mutt <laughs> you up licking it's gross, man. Go on then. Cheers. That's warm. <laughs> Well, 
it ain't gonna get any better than this you've seen me brush my teeth before and put my tent away before so I will leave it here anyway if you have liked the video as always give it one of those big fat thumbs up and share as well share the channel if you feel someone's gonna benefit from uh, seeing the positivity that I'm just trying to sort of push out there then you know tell your work colleagues tell friends and just get a few more people on board it all definitely helps if you're interested in any of the products I use then I will put a link in the description generally for it there's definitely going to be one for this jacket and the tent and sleeping bag and other bits like that that I've mentioned in this video so check that out and also there's a couple of uh, discount codes as well that you might want to check out and i'm on instagram if you want to uh join me there i always put a few posts up here and there just to sort of tell you where i'm going and what i'm on with and i generally have a little bit more interaction with people on there buy me a coffee link you can buy me a coffee just to contribute to the channel or you can join the patreon but this is what it's all about getting out and just enjoying life as much as possible in the great outdoors and this is what it is this vast space that we've got in the uk that is just incredible you just need to get out and see it so from me hold on Dal, and the beautiful blue we'll see you another day take care